Zambians here is your minister. Gary Combo, the minister of local governance. Remember his debates in parliament. He spoke of the forestry land that the previous regime ministers shared with them. And he warned them of accountability once sworn in in 2021. Do you think he now has the capacity to execute his long-awaited justice for the people of Zambia? Listen to the clips that follow as you keep thinking. About how he intends the constituency development plan to first be broadened, and once it's broadened, it gets to the district, and it means that people are going to get closer to one, the decision making, and two, to the application of the natural, the natural resources, the financial resources that the country is endowed with. I am here to settle down. I'm going to report at the office as soon as possible time, subject to what uh, our permanent secretary advises. We're going to have to go through induction. We're going to have to go through introductions to know the people who are there, the directors, to face what challenges they had, and uh, obviously to culminate into maybe assembling all the council of mayors and council town, uh, town chairpersons, the council secretaries, to one common place from all around the country in order to appreciate the type of challenges that they've been having. And so, clearly speaking, to answer your question in one straight shot, which is a big challenge for me, but I think I'm up to the task. And I'm glad to... So I'm going to bring them again. Constance, relax. <laughs> if somebody's giving you crap, it's crap. <laughs> All right, so finally it is done and uh, dusted in terms of uh, the appointment of cabinet ministers here at uh, State House and set us grounds where I am standing, as you can see right now. And uh, behind uh, this a huge number of people that came to witness the uh, swearing-in ceremony of uh, different, uh, you know, uh, 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 ministers as alongside uh, provincial ministers. And uh, of course, I should make mention that there are various personalities here, uh, politicians, uh, business uh, CS members of CSOs, as well as um, uh, business communities uh, leaders are also here to ensure that they witness the swearing in ceremony of, uh, 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 of course, uh, the people that are going to work alongside uh, President Hagen de Hichilema from now up to 2026 uh, when we are going to have another general elections. So, of course, later on, we will be able to uh, subject you to uh, various reactions coming from a different uh, stakeholders or eyewitnesses that came to be part and parcel of uh, this uh, great and very uh, landmark, uh, you know, uh, a ceremony here at uh, State House on State House ground. My name is uh, Innocent Piri I. Piri, of course. Allow me just to begin to engage in a few people that, of course, I will be joining in um, uh, in a moment. Uh, we're just waiting for uh, some stakeholders who have uh, invited to uh, be able to give you uh, their reactions as far as the cabinet ministers are concerned. Now, let me just take you through uh, some of the names that have been uh, actually lucky to be appointed today as uh, cabinet ministers. I know that one of the very common name is uh, that of uh, Gary Nkombo, who has been appointed as a minister of local government. And uh, also, uh, number two there, I have uh, Rodney Muwanga, MP, uh, minister, the minister of uh, tourism and arts. Uh, another name there, very interesting name, is uh, Elias, uh, brother, uh, I beg your pardon there, uh, this uh, Elias Muwanga, brother, 
is all right. So Rodney Sikumba MP is a Minister of Tourism and Arts. Just a correction on that one. And uh, wow, we've got Elas Mwanga MP Minister, the Minister of uh, Small, Medium and uh, Enterprises. This basically happened to be a new ministry that has been uh, created by President Haga in the Hichlema. Remember that uh, he was uh, trying by all means to uh, realign and also create new ministries that are going to be subjected to uh, members of parliament and the National Assembly to ratify because according to the constitution of Zambia, when you establish or when a Republican president establishes a new or create a new, uh, 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 a new ministry, there will be need for members of parliament to be able to engage in, uh, of course, uh, 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 members of parliament to ratification. Let me just engage in now, Honorable uh, Kapelo Mbangweta, one of the very uh, famous and very, uh, you know, a prominent politician in Zambia, member of parliament, who just retained his seat. Uh, of course, let's find out how he has received this uh, uh, appointment, uh, him being a provincial minister for Northwestern. Honorable, welcome to this interview, and uh, you're live on Movie TV. Thank you very much. It's actually Western Province. Uh, yeah. We have received it as a challenge. Mm. Uh, Western Province has a number of challenges. We are the poorest province in the country, and so it means that uh, the thing we're complaining about now we have the opportunity to put things right. Okay. The major issues have been the roads, the Sakamong Road, the bridge in the Cafe National Park, Katunda Lukulu, Livingstone Sesheke Road, and the Kasempa Kaoma. Okay? Now, under this government, there are three of us who are affected by those three issues I've talked about. Infrastructure is under uh, Honorable Milupi, he comes from there. Finance, under Honorable Sokotu and he comes from there. So if the three of us will fail to fix any of those projects over our time, then definitely we have no recourse or reason to complain because now we have been given the opportunity. Of course, the other issues or challenges which the previous administration had created in a sense but failed to address. My constituents are the bomber in Kayema, but that bomber is still in the soil because no houses, no offices have been built over the period. We have the similar situation in Mitete, similar situation in Monga Folwena. Okay? Then we had pronouncements which were made to do with the stadium, to do with the university, the King Luan. Um It does not look very well that the universities which were pronounced with this, at the same time with the King Lewanika, they have now opened. Our place is still in the bush. That is not sitting very well. Of course, we have issues to do with the, the daily routine of life, like water and sanitation in a number of our areas. We need to upscale that. The issues to do with the unemployment uh, need to be addressed. So it means that we need to bring industries there which can create employment. One way to do it is to make sure that um, uh, the products which we produce, like rice, like timber, they are processed that side. Instead of being taken away, uh, processed to somewhere else, and they are brought back as finished product that are not creating employment. So that, those are some of our challenges which we need to look at. And of course, we need to have, a, for me, at least a mindset, eh? a mindset change. Because before, we used to complain yeah, that this government is not doing this, is not doing the other. But now, even the people expect us to fix all those issues we used to complain about. And that means then that our uh, responsibility now is on us. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Honorable, and uh, allow me to wish you the best. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, congratulations for returning your seat. Thank you very much. I appreciate this opportunity <laughs> yeah. to speak. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Great. So just from speaking to newly appointed uh, minister for Western Province, uh, Honorable Kapelo Mbangweta, who happens to be, of course, uh, uh, of course, a member of parliament for Nkeyema constituents, uh, we get further reactions uh, from the stakeholders all here on our, our, our state house grounds here in Lusaka for those that are watching us across uh, the borders of Zambia. Let me just uh, engage in another stakeholder from uh, the alliance partner of the UPND and is coming from the Republican Progressive uh, Party. He happens to be the SG and of course Alyssa uh, Ingenja 
uh, one of the very prominent faces, not a stranger uh, on movie TV screen, uh, has been there actually. Uh, Akapelo is here to just uh, add on his views regarding what has just taken place here uh, at uh, State House. Mr. Akapelo, please uh, step forward. Uh, good afternoon and uh, welcome to this interview live on movie TV. Good afternoon. It's great. You've been part and parcel of uh, this uh, you know, set of uh, swelling in seven from yesterday until where we are today. Uh, what could be your now, your voice regarding the completion of uh, HH's cabinet ministers alongside provincial ministers? Well, uh, I think it's a complete set. I think they are long awaited for uh, uh, appointments. And uh, I think uh, the citizens of this country now are so thirsty and are waiting for deliverables. Yeah. And I think uh, the president has been very categorical in his statement. Mm. I think uh, these appointments should not excite the ministers as uh, individuals that were involved in the campaign. I think um, the expectations of the Zambian people, the fact that cabinet now is in force. So we are waiting for parliament, uh, parliament to open on Friday and obviously that's when now we uh, uh, start working with the policies and uh, quoting from the UPND manifesto. I think uh, uh, the expectations of the Roman people is uh, quite huge. And the mantle now is incumbent on the ministers to deliver. Because uh, you see this country has gone through a lot of um, uh, problems. Economic trouble, political troubles, and I think it's a healing process that we have to undergo. In so far, I think the president has demonstrated that peace is imminent because you know we are divided as Zambians, and I think he's been a unifier. In so far, we can see that people are at peace, people are trading freely, people are moving freely. You are able to put on any sort of regalia of your choice. This is what we wanted to see. So the divisiveness that the PF regime had uh, planted in the Zambian people. I think it's a process that we have to now heal and begin afresh. I think uh, the president has been very categorical and we want to thank him for, for having given us the, the merited the appointment. I think that is good enough for the country. I know that uh, as RIPP you are of course a member of the UPND Alliance. Uh, what does it demonstrate? You, we saw yesterday Bali uh, going further to appoint uh, Felix Mutati as one of the cabinet ministers as well as uh, Honorable Charles Minupi coming from the AD. What does this demonstrate uh, in incorporating people from the opposition or uh, UPND alliance for that? I think it's one statement unifying the country and he's been talking about this since, since inception. I think uh, his core uh, uh, value is quickly, quickly to unify the country. And that's a process of healing. And you know we were divided for a long time. And the, as alliance partners, we are very excited, that I must say. Because then, and I know for sure that the president hasn't ended there. Because if you look at the number of alliance uh, comrades that are in the, in the UPND alliance, they are quite a number. And I'm sure he's going further. This is just a litmus test to demonstrate that he's able to fulfill his promises as put across from the inception. So we are waiting for more appointments from the alliance. And uh, this is a process of unifying the country. And uh, he's delivered on his promises. And kudos goes to that sort of a situation. And then we expect more from this end. Thank you so much uh, for coming. Thank you very much, Mr. Perry. Thank you. And I appreciate it. All the best. Thank you. One of the uh, prominent uh, faces, not new in Zambian politics, very, uh, I would say, controversial man and a veteran politician in Zambia is now in charge of local government and ministry. Honorable Gary Nkombo, you are live on Movie TV and welcome to this interview. Thank you very much, my dear friend. Thank you very much, viewers. Good afternoon. All right. Uh, well, what hope are you giving to the people of Zambia with regards to the new uh, position you have now as a minister? Well, I think that it should be known by, by everyone that it can never be an individual effort. It's a collective effort. We have a cabinet that has been put in place. We are going to look and brainstorm at all the challenges that have been uh, you know, facing our ministry, tapping from those who have been there before, uh, to learn what challenges they had, to be able to understand and try to find solutions as to how we can reverse those issues that today considered those become dysfunctional, such as the markets and bus station art, we know very well that they stopped working, they stopped functioning. Was it a man-made affair or was it beyond uh, human control? Those are the things that we have. when we 
settled down when we are inducted, when we are introduced to the people that matter in the ministry, that we can sit together as a team and try to see what is broken and what is not, and try to focus on what is broken and not to fix. You've been in politics for so many years now, and uh, some people have described you as uh, a man of action, very pragmatic, very open. What are those things, one or two things, you want to well, change, right, to amend, to correct? Well, some of the things have well been done already, just by the change of the administration, you have seen that order has returned. You know, and those, so I'm saying if it's not fixed, the broken, we don't fix it. There are so many things that we are going to learn along the way, how to deal with them. And so for now, I will not give you an open check because I may be over committing myself. But one thing for a fact is that we are going to rely on the existing laws that govern us and try to apply them the best possible way. Where the laws are not applicable, we are going to go towards uh, you know amending them, repealing them and bringing in new laws in order for society to benefit from those same laws. Because don't forget, laws are made for man to function in a much more smoother way. And they're not supposed to be an impediment to their improvement in their social sector. I'll draw your attention regarding the huge you know, allegations of corruption, that is massive corruption, I should make mention, uh, that is, of course, in the construction sector, uh, which, of course, uh, falls under the local government. Uh, in the previous administration, we had a lot of contractors complaining, local contractors. You know, how do you hope to harmonize or remedy all these uh, problems, huge problems? We will cross the bridge when we get there. And as far as I'm concerned, yes, there's a part of it that is under the Ministry of Infrastructure. There's part of it, as you say, which is under the Ministry of Local Government. And I think the test of the pudding is in the eating. Please allow us to get into the ministry to get to understand exactly how the modus operandi has been, whether those allegations of corruption are truly tangible or not. It is give us time to go and settle down and at an appropriate time we're going to give a comprehensive state statement because at the moment it may be shooting in the air or shooting in the air. Finally, as we go on about, there's been a lot of demands or complaints from members of the public, marketeers or traders if you wish, who are being, you know, um, extorted money by the suspected cadres be it from uh, the previous uh, PF, there were a lot of complaints. We and have now, heard that. Yes. We have heard that. Yeah. We've read also from the Daily Nation publication of today. Uh, please allow us to settle down. You know, in the transition period, there's a lot of things that happen and people take advantage, even criminality sets in, in the name of uh, political parties, in the name of presidents, in the name of anything. So allow us to settle down and we're going to correct what is wrong. Thank you so much. Allow me to wish you the best. Thank you. Right. Remember to create an opportunity for yourself not to miss anything by subscribing and hitting the notification bell.